All right, so far we have looked at how to find the domain, um, the behavior of the square root function. And let's look at simplifying some radical expression. Our first thing here is that square root of a squared is absolute value of a. Now, why we need the absolute value is in order to restrict to the principal square root, which is the positive one. Okay, example, negative six squared is gonna be absolute value of negative six, which is negative, sorry, positive six. This is gonna be absolute value of x plus five. This is, well, let's rewrite this as 5x cubed times 5x cubed, which becomes absolute value of 5x cubed. This is x minus 2 squared. When you factor it, that becomes absolute value of x minus 2. Well, now we can proceed to something called cube roots. The cube root of a number is written as, we still use the same, um, the radical expression, and we put three here, three because it's a cube, right? So it's um, square root. When we say square root, um, there's a two there, which we do not write as a convention. But when we write a three, it becomes a cube root. When we write a four, it becomes a fourth root, etc. So for example, cube root of 64 is four because four times four times four is 64. And cube root of negative 27 is negative three. Is negative three times negative three times negative three is negative 27. So what we notice is cube root can take negative numbers as input. So its domain is negative infinity to infinity. Now can you figure out the range? Again, I'll, you can pause the video here and try to figure it out. But what's going to happen is if I have like a positive number, right? Three cubed is three times three times three is 27. So if I have a negative number, I'm negative five times negative five times negative five, which is negative 20, 125. This means that my range can be um, anything between positive and negative infinity. So same as the domain. Even an odd nth root. A square root can be thought of as the second root, cube root as the third root, and we define the fourth, fifth, sixth root, and so on. Well, what the third root means is it's a number you multiply three times to get that number, right? Similarly, for square root, you it's a number you multiply two times. For example, fifth root of 32 is two because two times two times two times two times two gives me 32. So five copies of two give me 32, and that's why the fifth root of 32 is 2. When n is odd, n being which root you're taking, the real number says exactly one root. If n is even, every positive real number has two roots, one positive and one negative. So, for example, you already know square root of 64 is 8 or negative 8, but if used as a function, fx equals root x, then it's only 8. Now here, this is even, it means there's two positive roots. And that's going to be, well, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. And also negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is 81. So this is 3, negative 3. So this is negative of 3 and negative 3. Um, so you have negative 3 and 3, which is the same answer. Now this is not possible. Why? Because well, you have a negative inside. And this is possible because it's an odd power. This is odd. All right? If it's odd, it means I can have negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, negative 2, and that gives me exactly negative 32. So this equals negative 2. So in general, this is the rule. If you're taking the nth root of a to the power n, it's absolute value of a if n is even, and it's simply a if n is odd. That's the end of this video. We'll talk about rational exponents next.